frame frame what we're about to do. This okay. is an important piece. All right. So we've been working on how to solve really hard questions that um, that uh, our employees might be asking us. And so as a team, we will want to get really good and skilled at crafting really accurate, purposeful responses that, that quell uh, insecurities and, and get our team, keep our teams engaged, informed, and on point. And so that's the goal is to keep them working and positive and understand the situation <clears throat> and not going sideways and not having to ask more questions and taking more of our time because in, in precise answers lead to more questions. And, and when we nail it with our answer, it's solved and done and dead. And so we, wanna, we don't have a lot of time, so we've got to be really precise with our communication. So first off, let's start with what are your tools for these hard questions? What, what, there's two sets of tools that you've been given. Who can tell us what the tools are, the way we're going to answer these questions? Acknowledge, align, and reframe. We're going to unacknowledge, align, and reframe. So we're going to, can, um, let's see. Zach, tell us what that means. Acknowledge, align, reframe. So the acknowledge step is, you know, just understanding where they're coming from, uh, kind of put yourself in their position, and then align. I guess acknowledge is, that first step, you know, understanding where they're coming from, then a line is getting on there uh, and sitting in their shoes, so to speak. And then reframing is, is just basically uh, telling them the why behind whatever the question is, but showing um, the behind the scenes, I guess, or basically repositioning it to where what we're doing is benefiting them in an instance. That's great. That's great. And they have a frame. We're going to move the frame to over here so they can understand our objective and how they're included in the ultimate objective of what we're trying to do. Perfect. Perfect. Very beautiful. All right. So what's the other tool? Uh, employee, customer, and company. Cool. Um, Jacob, could you tell us what that means to you? You're muted. It shows unmuted, actually. Oh, now you're muted. Now you're unmuted. Let's try again. It could be your mic microphone, Jacob. If your microphone itself is uh, muted, then... Or your headset. That, you may have your right. headset. People are getting screwed with that one a lot. Okay, Tommy's got a finger up. We're gonna to move to Tommy. Jacob, see if you can get your thing sorted out. In the meantime, we'll pull you back in. It really comes down to that if we're taking care of the employee, the employee's taking care of the customer, and then in, in all aspects, it's taking care of the company in the long run. I mean, that's the easiest way. I mean, if we're truly into taking care of our employees and the employees are taken care of and they really feel that they're being taken care of, they're gonna do the same thing to the customer. And then in, it's all back to a win-win situation. Yes, and can I reframe that just a little bit? That it's not about the way you explain that. Could be. Let, let me see if somebody else can reframe what Tommy said and make it and improve it just a little bit. There's a nuance in there. Again, the details are critical right now, and and there's a slight detail in there that I'm not. I don't think it's a hundred percent. I think you're ninety percent there. Can anybody see it? No. Okay. So Tommy, uh, I, I started with the, what the company's going to get. And so it, if we rewind that is our focus is the employee. That's the only thing we care about. Secondarily, our attention is then on the customer. And then third, we also have to take care of the company. And it's a very slight adjustment, but it was really coming from a place of what we're going to get. If we take care of the employee, then they'll take care of the customer. Then the company will be okay, as opposed to our focus is completely on the employee's safety right now. Secondly, our focus is on this and our focus is on that. And it's not a, what we're going to get out of it. We don't really not worried about what we're going to get right now. That's that shouldn't. 
if if we present what we're going to get, what what's good for Radiant to the if that's Keith had mentioned listening from a place of what is essential for the employee, listening from a place of then what is essential for the customer. Lastly, not even next. Lastly, what is important for the customer, uh, the company. So, do you, do you guys feel that difference? It's a slight shift, but it's not about what we're going to get. This is this is this is so backburnered right now. It's a hundred percent about taking care of our employee. This is a primary concern. Secondly, we're concerned about. Okay, so I'm 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 uh, belaboring a point. All right, cool. So now you guys have your three tools. Um, let's take a uh, let's take a Lori. Um, take take a stab at how we could answer this question. So I actually wrote out a script last night. Perfect. I'll read what I wrote, and I probably need to adjust a little bit. But okay. my response would be. I understand where this could be a concern. We are all in challenging times and it is something I'm sure crosses all of our minds as we see it happening all around us. Uh, so much is un unknown and we're figuring a lot out as we go. What we do know is that today is more important than ever for us to be diligent to serve the customer and provide the best service we have to offer. We know that our department books appointments to keep our techs working and it's a responsibility that could trickle into all departments if we don't have work. We need to be mindful that we are doing everything in our power to keep that part of the engine moving. <laughs> all right, that was very nice. So um, what feedback do we have on that? You, you got something, Keith? Looks like you're unmuting. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to take the opportunity to ask Laurie first. So just now that you've uh, shared that, um, let's just go through the steps. So first, where did you, uh, where did you acknowledge? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I acknowledged what they were saying. I understood their concern. Describe the alignment then. And then how did you align? Um, I aligned by, sorry, I just, I aligned by um, understanding that you know, we're all feeling these things right now because we're seeing it happen all around us with other people. Yeah. Fabulous, nice. And then where was the uh, reframe? What, what do you think the ultimate frame was that you asked uh, for that person to then experience? Um, just experience how um, the responsibilities that we have and our, our main goal is to serve the customer and realizing that this affects what we do affects all of our teammates nice so i think you i mean i think you really put a pretty elegant answer together now thinking of it in the new context what's one thing that you might modify even just slightly that you think would enhance any one of those three elements or you know the overall uh the overall experience of your response the only thing i was thinking was um in the reframing instead of putting it on what we're going to do for the customers, maybe thinking about the measures that we're taking for our coworkers to be safe. I think that's pretty awesome because I think if, if you reframe in the experience of your department's job is to make sure that you keep these, your fellow colleagues working and working safely, that's a game changer right there. And now you've, even your reframe is going back through the employee customer company model. Pretty good, pretty good. So Brad, I just wanted to jump in there to, to offer a shift in the debrief, give our, we, when we're debriefing somebody who just volunteered, give them the chance to give their feedback first on what would take it up and then open it up for any additional feedback to the team. Okay, yeah. so across the board for all of us to remember that. Yeah, following cool. the, the, uh, the trainer guidelines, I, I, was, I was skipped to critical steps. So thank you, Keith, for modeling the, uh, the correct behaviors is perfect. Perfect, perfect. And we have that we want to stop and point out from time to time when we're modeling. And, and thank you for doing that, Keith, because every now and then you'll just maybe consider that Keith butted in, but it was a key, it was a crucial miss on my part. And and he's just trying to coax us into a great behavior. Well, can, I, can you then, here, let me offer this opportunity. Can you point out what, what I just did poorly in the way that I just handled that? 
Um, so <laughs> as, as a, oh, let me think, how would, how would be the correct way to handle that? This is the inception of the facilitator model. So I just jumped in, yeah. modeled, which is fine. But then what did I do that was literally in direct contradiction to what I just shared about feedback? Uh, you didn't give me a chance to give feedback about how I did it? Yeah. Instead of saying, now, Brad, if you would, share with me why I just jumped in, giving yeah. you the chance. Instead, I just told you what the reason was. Yeah, and if, if you hadn't, I would I was on point to just explain. In case you didn't just catch this, Keith was modeling. So so, so I blew it right there. So, you know, <laughs> a little grace for all of us, all right? It is, it's perfection is hard to attain, but we, we were striving to, to just professional craftsmanship right here, people. This is your job, and uh, we want to just keep making it really, really apparent so you guys can feel how to really facilitate an amazing training. So we, we, we went from a hangout just a minute ago, and we just transitioned into a different format of training. That's, that D10 style is more of a hangout kind of a vibe, and we just moved into a training vibe just now. So, All right, so uh, what other feedback do we have um, on Lori's talk? What do we like about it? I mean, I think everything was great. Um, the one thing is, do we emphasize being an essential service and maybe our viability in town is just, you know, we'll have, just focusing on we'll have business and we may not be as much at risk as everyone else in the area, right? Because people's friends and family are getting furloughed and laid off. And so that's what's making them think about this, but maybe we can a statement of confidence is what you're suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I think a hopeful message embedded in here would be good. I think, uh, while things are dire, um, we're in a, in a very lucky situation to be able to still continue to work. So yeah, I think that would be great. I think that that could be a good addition. Any others? I like uh, Lori how you how you maintain the upbeatness uh, of your yellowness. Um, how you just really um, you know you you kept it in a good space when you were talking um, when you when you brought the question uh, when the question was brought to you 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 replied in just a very upbeat attitude and uh, it, it just it, asking somebody a question when you're in a moment of maybe a uh, fear or. Uh, just unknown and then to have someone you know answer the question like that not like um, uh, you know but versus like okay that's great let's talk about it you know I think that's amazing and that's just a quality that um, that you just showed that's such a great takeaway dude and this is why us getting the scripting down and it's exactly what we teach our technicians out in the field if you don't believe in the price it's going to show if you don't believe in these statements and what's behind these statements, your body language is going to give you away. Your tone of voice is not going to be right. So you really need to understand the intent and truly not just words, but come from this place of absolute care about the person and a deep understanding of the, the, uh, the nuts and bolts behind why we're where we're at. This is why I it's so critical that we're understanding what's happening and then we convey uh, the message in a really, really heartfelt way that is, you know, really received well. Great. Yeah, because I because I feel like these questions that if if they are asked by a by a teammate, may be asked by the person who constantly asks you questions, or the ones that you're already going through some coaching with uh, on on a, another level. So it may be easy just to go to that uh, to there if you're already uh, coaching this uh, individual on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, what do you think, Keith? How do we, because a, that's a really long script. I, I think that, 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 you know, sometimes we can take a script and then um, peel it down. And so I think maybe we could write out some key elements that have to, um, you know, just, just individually. Um, and, then, and then we, I don't know. I'm not sure this is. I, well, I, here's here's the thing you're talking about a very sensitive topic so you know what's beautiful about the framing of having the the, the two filters right where it's you know acknowledge a line and and reframe 
along with employee customer company is that it gives us a structure to create longer, more sensitive answers when necessary. So yeah, it's, it's longer. I mean, I wouldn't you know, expect everyone to go out and memorize that script right now. But if we understand where we're coming from, this becomes really natural. And the one, the one other piece to consider here is you know, just in the spirit of high performance coaching, you're actually really begin, being given an exceptional opportunity here. So acknowledge, you know, perfect. I totally get where that question is coming from. You know, I think it's been, it's been on my mind. Uh, it's been on, you know, how could it not be with, with seeing what's going on around us and, and recognizing the economic state that we're in. Um, you know, we're lucky to be an essential service. Uh, and, and so, so far that's been valuable. And nevertheless, we don't know what the future holds here. Um, now, the one thing I can share with you is that, right, when layoffs occur to create greater efficiencies in a business. And so, you know, from that standpoint, to give you back some, some control and some command, the question really for you is, what ways can you adapt and create more value right now than ever before to ensure that you're a vital piece of this organization, you know, regardless of what's going on around us? And when we ask that question back now, you know, well, what do you guys think? What are some quick answers that pop into your mind? If I were asking you that question right now, what pops into your head as ways that you can adapt and evolve and contribute more than ever to the organization? You're literally asking. Laurie, yeah, I'm literally asking like, Laurie, what do you think an answer would be in your department? Well, we've already done a few things. Um, we've, we're having every single unbooked call they have to chat Morgan and I, and we're listening to it immediately to be able to pivot on calling the customer back if we feel it's worthy. Amazing. Chris, what, what do you think you might hear over on your side? Um, I would say for me, it's um, having a better commitment for the ever-changing uh, set of rules that are always coming our way and not to, not to um, live too much in the past. Because I think that's something we've got a lot going on right now is, is we want to live in the Good. past and hold on to what we have and, and we're kind of unwilling to, to try new things. Sick. And, and just real quick, if you were a, a pivot into the mind of a technician, what do you think a technician's answer to this question might be if, this, if you had asked them back? So what's something you can do to adapt and contribute more than ever? From a technician standpoint, I would say that uh, the response would probably be along the lines of um, making, I actually think my first answer is a little similar to how the text would, would, would say it, because we've got a lot of guys that are living in, are holding on to what we had. Um, but I would probably say that from a technician standpoint, they'd say is I'd, I'd probably actually give the six options this time and, and, and raise my hand more and, and call my service manager like I'm supposed to be doing. and. Yeah. Cool. All right. So really thank you both. And then kicking it back to Brad and you can take it from here on this piece is, is, you know, what do we think, what do you notice in asking that one additional question, what comes out of this and how do we leave our, our, you know, employee or the person who was asking that question and Brad, I'll, I'll let you run it from, from there. Yeah, I love it. I think that's perfect. Um, I think um, when we talk about, um, create greater efficiencies. I, this is one of those things could be tweaked and say create balance. Uh, because if, you know, it, this is streamlining, um, layoffs, these are scary words, right? So we, we're, we're uh, yes, I, I can see that you understand uh, our business model. Uh, we all understand how this business works. And it's a, it's a, it's an organism that re it requires balance. And so yes, you're right. If we are running less calls, then that means there's not enough revenue and, and inevitably we have to balance out the ecosystem for this thing to work. So the question is, is what can you do to increase? Can we use our, do some brainstorming, use your imagination. Let's think of outside of the box. What haven't we considered? Let's go there and let's, we're committed to not going there as an organization. That would be my thing. I, I would say if I was starting from scratch and writing this, and I, I think, Okay, the first thing I want to do is acknowledge and I want to, so this employee focus first has really been about safety, uh, but we've really not locked in the, the CSRs. 
uh, income as well as the focus. So we could verbalize that. So you know how focused we are on safety? Well, at the same time, our number one priority is making sure no one loses their job in this process. So that's driving, therefore, that's driving a lot of our decisions and then acknowledge the fact that yes, um, the balance has to be there for this machine to work. Then move to what is it that uh, we can do as a team to ensure that those calls are there for our technicians and we don't run out of work? What, what can we do and have that conversation? So I think, I, think that really, I think that really starts to tighten up the feel of the conversation. I would say Brad's answer, Laurie's answer, and my answer are all really good answers and all would have been fabulous facing this particular question. And that's why it doesn't have to be a script. It has to be Intent. about its integrity and intention, right? And if we can create that alignment and then use these communication tools, all three of those answers end up being wonderful, especially Laurie, even more so after you made that slight modification to you know, keeping our, our teammates working and, and so valuing every call more than ever, right? Stuff like that, that's phenomenal. So. Brad, I think you can do two things. If you want to go for it right now, we could try the breakout room thing. If you want to take a peek, I, it's in your advanced, it's in your advanced settings. But okay. if not, what we can do, everybody's muted right now. We can just do a quick phone call to you guys can partner up and spend the, you know, and it's up to you, whatever you want to do with our time right now, but we could do a quick little, um, you know, three to five minute uh, skill practice. You decide. I don't know where you want to go timing wise, but that would be an example of the next step you could take. What, what I would like to turn this into homework for individuals. We've got, we're 40 minutes over time and do the fact that we're in a crisis. I would love everybody to do a draft and, and turn it into the email it up to the a, a D10 chain. That would be my, my ideal is every single one of you at some point in the next 24 hours, turn in a draft of your version of this. And then know that when you have this, um, this conversation, it, it's delivered from a place of compassion and confidence. And, and, and again, let's go back to the framing. We're at war and, and Tommy's team and, and the, all the techs, these are the front lines, but we also have to have a brave face for the, the, the families at home that are working in the factory supporting the efforts on the war front, right? And so our, we have to consider your audience, and, and come from a place of confidence and compassion for what they're going through right now. And it's going to be a beautiful execution. Mm. Nice. All right. Um, on a scale of one to 10, uh, how do we feel about this meeting flow? Yeah, we, we did go a little long still again. That's we're going to, this is going to vary because we're in wartime. So, and JR, um, JR, Chris, Lori on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate this meeting? I would say nine. Okay, Chris, ten, nine. Lori? Nine. Uh, Vix out. Tommy, Keith, Kevin, how would you rate the meeting? Ten, nine. Scott, Odie, Zach. Nine, nine, nine. I didn't see your Zach. Eight, okay. Uh, All right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the stick. I'm gonna give this a, a six and a half and I'm going to give myself a four for having filibustered there in the middle of it. And, uh, and so I just want to make sure that we're striving for a lot more than just this. It's a tremendous improvement, but trust me, we've got a long way to go to being executing in an extraordinary way. What, I, what I'd like everybody to do is when you do your draft of, are we going to have layoffs? It, send me a note and tell me what can make this meeting better. Okay. Add that to your to add that to your uh, to do. So everybody's got a to do. Odie, could you add that to the to dos and just say everybody? <laughs> Already so, added. To do. So are we just answering the layoff question, or are we answering those three questions that you had in there, um, the hard questions? I I I think the layoff question is adequate. If you want to tackle those from your own frame, please improve them. Go for it. People are swamped right now, so I don't know that, that you know those were given out to to set a standard and give you guys something to work from. And it would give you a lot more agility around this conversation if you spent some time crafting 
you're going to be, be at a really good place to answer those questions. So I highly yeah. recommend you do that. I'm not going to require you to do that because of time constraints, but you uh, no, I appreciate that. I was just getting clarity on the homework. Yeah, if you want to be a master, I'm not asking for, I'm not asking for more homework. Spend some time there. Yeah, that would that would take your level of excellence really high if you did play there. We're wanting these emailed to you or on Basecamp. Where are we wanting these? Um, I'll send an email to the team and you guys just reply in that thread. That would be the cleanest. Great question. All right. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, have a great day. Reach out if you need anything. Everybody, two clap. Boom. Boom. Great Boom. afternoon, guys.